My name is Dr. Peter Ngene. Um, I'm an assistant professor at the Dubai Institute of Nanomaterial Science in Utrecht University. Uh, so I'm originally from Nigeria and my research is uh, in the general area of nanomaterials. So uh, I try to um, discover new materials that can be used to realize uh, some new applications as well as to solve some of the most critical uh, challenge of our time, uh, especially in the area of um, energy, uh, environmental protection and uh, sensors. Well, my uh, current focus is on energy storage, so I try to develop materials that can be used uh, to, to store energy for energy conversion and storage. So why do we need this kind of material? So uh, as some of us might be aware, uh, the entire world is uh, transiting from the use of fossil fuels to renewable energy uh, sources such as uh, solar uh, and wind. Um, the major problem with these energy sources is that they are intermittent in nature, so um, the sun doesn't shine all the time, uh, neither do we have the wind energy all the time. So we need a way to um, store this energy when they are available so that we can use them um, when they are needed and they are not available. So Another aspect of my research is looking at um, how do we deal with the problem of CO2, uh, which is, uh, has been, um, um, has been, it's been known that this is the major cause of global warming, the rise in temperature of the earth. So what we're trying to do is to find a way that we can use CO2 as a source, you know, even to make what we call synthetic fuels. So you can uh, combine CO2, uh, which is carbon dioxide, with hydrogen that you produce using renewable energy, uh, renewable electricity from the wind or from uh, the solar panel and then we can use that and combine it with this CO2 and we can make liquid fuels. Uh, we can make uh, uh, ethanol, we can make methanol, which we can also use as well. Also, we can combine this hydrogen also with nitrogen to make something they call ammonia. This ammonia can be used as, for, that's one of the key ingredients of fertilizers. So we can use that as fertilizer and you can also use that as a way to actually store your hydrogen because the ammonia contains a lot of hydrogen. When you heat it up again, it will also give back the hydrogen, you can use it to drive your car while the nitrogen returns back to the, to the atmosphere. So at the end of the day, you have a closed cycle. And with this, we are going to uh, ensure complete uh, um, a renewable future for, for ourselves. Africa needs what I do actually uh, so much uh, because uh, we are not even able to provide sufficient energy that is needed for today. And uh, the interesting thing is that the developed world, it took them years to develop you know, a way to distribute energy, electricity. And now they have to change all this system uh, because the distribution uh, uh, system is not, might not be compatible with the new uh, energy scenario of, of the future. And, but in Africa, because we don't even have this infrastructure in existence, so this gives us opportunity to start from scratch, and then we can really start with this, what we call green energy uh, approach. So we need that. However, we know uh, the problem of um, Africa is uh, lack of infrastructure. Uh, we don't have adequate, adequate um, uh, funding for research and development. Um, but this is something that I believe that with political will, all the stakeholders coming together and the African government coming together to think about it, I think they've got huge resources that if well utilized, they will be able to achieve uh, energy independent. Well, I don't really like using the word energy independent, but energy sufficiency, so you can, they will be able to tap into this. So Africa might not be ready, but it's a necessity because we cannot do without this. We cannot continue to burn the fossil fuels or the biomass uh, that is being used in a lot of the villages right now and expect that we are going to all, um, meet up with our own, uh, uh, the ability to reduce our carbon footprint. And one thing that is important is also uh, that uh, if the cars that we're using right now that are based on gasoline, they are phased out, we will now need to use 
new type of vehicle, electric vehicles. Uh, and so it's, we just have to invest in this technology because if we don't do that, then tomorrow there's no way we'll even be able to assess um, to have this mobility. And so the, the better we invest in them early, you know, the, the good for us. So it's a question of necessity. So the necessity is going to drive the need. So it's not a question of are we ready or not, but we just have to do something. Well, I think uh, the, the gap is um, it's a bit wide. So uh, I do both fundamental and applied research. And if you think about the gap that do exist, first of all, we have to uh, tackle the infrastructural challenge. We need to start putting the infrastructure on the ground, and then we have to build capacity. We have to train manpower, a uh, new generation of scientists that even understand how this technology works. So there's a huge gap, but this gap is, like I said, what can be bridged easily if we begin to invest right now. We've got good schools. We can improve the standard of the school, but we already have schools where this kind of technology you know, can be taught. And we have Africans who are doing wonderful research uh, all over the world. Uh, why not tap into these resources? And, and, and if we cannot do it countrywide, we can also have a kind of pan-African initiative to say, okay, how do we tackle this together uh, using the abundant resources we have on the continent and then uh, trying to see how we can channel some of those resources into building capacity, you know, building new laboratories and then even uh, going from laboratory to also try, you know, a pilot plant demonstration. Things like battery, for example, we have abundant cobalt uh, in, 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 in Congo and then why can't we think about how can we harness this to begin to uh, uh, make, you know, a battery. So this is one of the most expensive ingredients in battery. We can do that. So the resources are there. But the political will and the understanding of the challenges that we face as Africa, if we don't invest, that is what I'm not, um, uh, I'm not quite confident to talk about, to, to talk about how much are we prepared, you know, how well are we prepared. But it's something that the, this gap is something that we can bridge if we have the political will and the cohesiveness to work together in, in a pan-African way, we can solve that. Well, I will start from uh, the Netherlands where, where I'm based, and there's a very good uh, working relationship between the university and the government and the industry uh, uh, to, to support uh, research and development that is geared towards sustainable energy, you know, realizing sustainable environments uh, um, at the end of the day because it's beneficial for both, for everybody. In Africa, um, I don't know how this is done, but I don't, I have not seen um, this happening so much. So, and I think that a NEF, um, Nest Einstein Forum can stand as a facilitator to bring the industries together and then the government, you know, Pan-Africa, in a Pan-African way to say, these are the challenges, and then these are the possible solutions. Can we work together? Uh, because abroad, what you see is that um, the, 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 the companies that do invest in research and development to achieve these technologies, to make them realizable, often get some tax rebate from the government, uh, and that is why they do that. And they can also make business out of it, because if there's a very good discovery, they will be among the first people to uh, to benefit from the from this product that is going to result out of this discovery, so I think African government can do that as well. Say, so, okay, all the major oil companies, you know, working in on the African continent, that they should be able to set aside part of their profits to fund research and development that gears towards making uh, so achieving sustainable environment. Well, in the next five to ten years, uh, I want to see myself uh, being able to develop uh, new technologies that will really facilitate this transition uh, to renewable uh, energy, which will help us to achieve um, sustainable environment. Um, that is both in area of batteries and then um, 
hydrogen storage, like I said, and then um, developing new kind of material that will help us to, co to, to tackle the issue of uh, carbon dioxide. And more importantly as well, I also want to be able to contribute to training young Africans that should be able to understand this technology and should be able to contribute in the effort to re realize uh, a sustainable or energy independence for Africa and also um, being able also to partner with the government to really let them understand what we need to do and being able to uh, convince them to do this. Uh, this is where, this is my passion and this is what I want to be able to achieve in the next five to ten years. My message to aspiring NEF fellows is to go for it. For the past one year I've been a NEF fellow, I can say that uh, this fellowship has provided me an opportunity to engage with other bright minds, scientists from Africa. Um, using this platform, we've been able to discuss at various levels on how to use science and technology and our experience to begin to change the narrative uh, in, in Africa. Uh, it's always been about hunger, poverty, and disease. And however, Africa is endowed with a lot of resources and then with also human resources. And a lot of Africans are doing wonderful things uh, here and there all over the world. So this fellowship has given me opportunity of meeting these people. And I believe that uh, together we can form uh, a critical mass that, that will be able to uh, bring the change that we so much desire uh, on the continent. I've gotten uh, opportunity to talk with policymakers, and then I've also been able to, um, to, got, to get training, personal training, to help my leadership skill and other things as a scientist. So I can say that this is a very wonderful opportunity, and I'm really grateful to the people that initiated this uh, great, uh, uh, that had, uh, that initiated this uh, platform. And um, so you are welcome to join us. And I'm looking forward to meeting the next uh, generation of young scientists that together we can work together to, to achieve the things that people can only dream in Africa. So welcome.